Hello and thanks for joining. Today I'm going to present on some observations for setting up and running an application with an NFS server on OpenShift. Uh, this is put together by myself, Barry Mozakowski, and Pam Andrako. And again, this is the goal is to understand using NFS and OpenShift as a storage option. It's fairly simple. Uh, let's just talk about the different pieces. So first of all, we had to create an NFS server, and we will walk through some of the steps. Then in your OpenShift environment, create a persistent volume, create a persistent volume claim, and then create a pod that uses the PVC uh, just to prove that you have done this properly. Creating the NFS server. Uh, above is a link on how to set this up on rail and it's pretty much seven or eight steps it's pretty basic and once you have it done um, what i recommend is just setting up and this will be shown in a live demo recorded demo i should say um, of just setting up the nfs a client on that machine to connect to that server and simply doing an and a net stat and even putting a file in the mount point and then grab on the NFS server, which listens on port 2049, just to prove that you know your NFS server is working properly before you move into your OpenShift environment. Uh, here are some sample commands you can issue. Um, just to understand that you are listening, um, doing a DF command that'll show your disk free and which shows you your mount points. And with these two commands, you can be pretty confident that what you have is working. And in our case, um, I'm including the mount um, above. You can see there's a sudo command to actually issue the mount. And these are all in those instructions. And on that link I sent you, we'll walk you through this process. Uh, the only thing it doesn't do is some of these sanity checks, which I have provided below. Now creating the PV, and we also have a link for this. It's at the end of the presentation. And this is simply the YAML file. As you can see, uh, the access mode, it can really be whatever you want. Um, the persistent volume reclaim policy, we have recycle with a storage class of NFS. And as you will see, this isn't truly a storage class. It just gets used for the purpose of attaching your PVC to this PV. In other words, if you do an OC get storage, you will not see NFS. Uh, and you can see in my persistent volume, step three is a critical point, and that's what actually points to my path and to my server that gets, which is my NFS server. And I've included the sample from the setup we had. You could see on the far left of the presentation, uh, which again will be shown in the demo. Here's actually creating your PVC. Obviously you have the metadata name, we call it NFS PVC. Um, you put the preferred storage class, you wanna use NFS and you wanna do read, write many. And after this is complete, you can always look at your PVC to ensure that you truly did get attached to your um, NFS storage class. Um, because when you do create the PVC, uh, it will look for the matching PV that it attaches to. So if you do not um, specify the storage class, it will probably give you whatever other storage um, options you're using in your OpenShift. Uh, then here's a sample pod. And again, um, there are links at the end which show you through setting this up. And this is how you actually can prove that you, you did set this up properly. And this is some sample code using an OpenShift a Kubernetes uh, resource of pod and just deploying an Nginx. And if the pod comes up and running, you know that it worked. Uh, there is a sample there where you can actually you know bring up a page, but um, if that pod comes up and you can describe the pod, at that point you realize that you have successfully used your NFS storage. And you can always go back, which I will show in the demo, you can always go back and look at your NFS server to prove with Netstat once again uh, that one of the worker nodes has formed, um, is connected in as an NFS client. Okay, let's do a demo now.
Hi, I'm going to do a demonstration now based on the presentation that Pam gave you. And what I'm going to do is to deploy, show you an NFS server, I'll show you what's running on it. And then I'm going to deploy YAML files that deploy a persistent volume, a persistent volume claim, and then an application that uses that storage uh, and the PVC based on the NFS server that it has mounted. So I'll have three windows up. One is on the NFS server, which is here. Another is just going to be a command prompt where I will have my YAML files. And I'll also go be going to uh, Firefox uh, where I have an OpenShift cluster that I will actually deploy the application and we can see it running. So the first thing is on the NFS server itself. Um, just to prove what you're looking at if you stand one up. If you do a DF, you can obviously you know, see the disk file system. And in this case, as Pam discussed in the presentation, just to prove your NFS server is up and working properly, you can always do a little mount to yourself, which you can see here. Um, so just a, a quick little test you can always do is if I go to, so if I do a mount um, client share, and I do a vi hello dot text and uh, okay that was actually mounted on this NFS server in the slash mount slash NFS slash NFS shares directory that you can see here and so let's do that that's really where this lives So you can see it there. So if I, right, that's what we just put out there. So it's a good litmus test. Another thing you could do is if you do a netstat dash in grip NFS listens on port 2049, you'll see uh, TCP listeners for v4, v6, and then you see that internal connection we just established. So that's the NFS server piece of it. Now let's go over to the uh, OpenShift Kubernetes slash piece. And I have three files here that I'm going to run through. One is the persistent volume, uh, which will point to a storage class that's NFS based. Uh, the other is a PVC, which will uh, use that PV, and then an application that will use the persistent volume claim. So let's take a look at each of these. So in the PV, the key point here is you can see there's a storage class, and this is something I kind of made up, which will get dynamically added in, uh, but OC get storage class will not show this. And you can see here is that NFS server that we are using. If I look at the PVC, right, this is obviously pointing to that storage class um, and maybe someone in the crowd has helped already with it's kind of an imaginary storage class, a placeholder, if you will. Uh, I could talk about the name, the PVC, and this storage class will know that it has that PV that meets this access mode. And then there is the application, if you will. In this case, it is um, an Nginx. We're going to pull down a container. And you can see it's going to use that NFS claim. And the key you know is if this pod's up and running is that you know it worked. Okay. So now I will go over to my UI. I could do all this through the command line, but I'll create a project. We'll call it NFS Mark. Mark is our guest of honor today. Okay, so now I'm an NFS mark, and let's apply these. In this order. Create, we all know this. Uh, we can see that storage class, so that's good. And let's grab our PV 
PC, which we talked about, pointing at that storage class, which we'll note has that PB in it. And we can apply this. Okay, looks good. And if I go to my persistent volumes, you can see I have this particular volume, uh, my PVC. And I think it's probably down here just based on the order. And now let's stand up this application. And I'd also like to do OC project NFS mark OC get PVC. I just wanted to prove that that was out there. Okay. All right. Let's now apply this. And this is actually standing our application using that claim. Oh, looks like I was missing a character on my cut and paste. Oh, let me go back here real quick. Yeah, there's one. And let's see what it didn't like. A metadata namespace not found. And let me just. Life simple. All right. And yeah, let's see what happens. So I applied it using the CLI. And sometimes this takes a second to come up. So let's. And we can do a wait on it. And let's keep track of this. Okay, I put a little pause and I didn't want to take everybody's time, but as you can see here now, uh, the pod did come up and it is running and it took 99 seconds for that to all occur. Um, I go back, I can say OC, describe the pod. All right, everything's good. He, you know, NGINX is up. And we know that the persistent volume claim is good. NFS PBC mark. Um, another good way to look at this is to go back to our actual NFS server now. And I will see this connection in here. Right. You can now see I have the connection from dot 80. That is my actual worker node. And you can see it's connected to the NFS server. Uh, so I think I, I hope this helps to show a working example of um, standing on an NFS server, you have the link to do it. It's very easy. Ensuring your NFS server is working. Then go into your OpenShift, creating a, a persistent volume, per persistent volume claim, and an application that uses that uh, tied to um, a storage class. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for watching the demo and just to talk about some of the lessons learned. Uh, one of the big ones is that the PV, the persistent volume store and storage class and the NFS mount, they're not actually validated until you um, use that PVC, it's created and you try to mount that pod to it. That's when you can actually see it failing. So that is just, um, at that point, you're going to go through normal debugging type work where you might want to go and look back at your NFS server, see if that connection is there. Um, understand that you know, if you just had a, a problem with your YAML files, with some of your parameters, simply a finger check. 
And also the NFS storage class is not visible from an OC get SC command. So those are a couple key ones. And I want to leave everybody with just the resources that we use. It was two primary resources that really can help you do this pretty quickly. Uh, one is how to configure the NFS uh, persistent volume in Kubernetes, and the other is the Red Hat uh, open storage using NFS. So these are a couple very valuable links that can help you. And once again, uh, thank you for joining.